When I first saw the ingredients of pork tenderloin and broccoli rabe, my mind immediately goes to Italian cuisine. That's what I'm most familiar with, that's what my family's background is, um, and porchetta just seemed to be a natural fit for the pork. So the first part, we're going to actually make the broccoli rabe pesto. The pesto will go inside of the pork, as well as serve as a delicious sauce on the bottom of the plate. So how we do that, we take the raw broccoli rabe here, we'll cut it into a little bit smaller pieces, and it goes straight into salted boiling water. Broccoli rabe is a very tender vegetable. It only takes a couple of minutes to cook. I'd say about a minute and a half, two minutes to set that bright green color that we're looking for. And there we go. It's been about two minutes now and you can see the bright green color has set in the broccolini. We're just gonna shock it quickly in the ice water to stop that cooking process and keep that bright green color. And now we wanna dry out some of the moisture from it soaking in the water. We don't want all that water inside the pesto. So I'm just gonna put it here on a clean towel. Just gonna chop it up into a couple little smaller pieces that'll help emulsify and, and blend the pesto. And as you know, pesto is typically made with basil, but in this version, we're using broccoli rabe for a little different twist but all the same ingredients, the Parmesan cheese, the roasted garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil. To the broccoli rabe, we're gonna add a bit of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna add a couple of cloves of roasted garlic. Kosher salt. Fresh ground black pepper. A little bit of the olive oil to get the process started. And now once everything is nicely pureed, we're just adding oil to achieve the, the consistency that we're looking for. And there you have it, broccoli rabe pesto. All right, now we're ready to start making the porchetta. So we're starting with this beautiful Chairman's Reserve pork tenderloin, center cut. And what I'm gonna do now is butterfly it open. So what I do is lay it on a flat surface Carefully with the knife, cut about three quarters of the way through the meat. And then we're gonna roll it. And we're just gonna keep cutting there. So we're essentially flattening out this pork tenderloin. And then to make it an even thickness, I like to take a piece of plastic wrap. And then with a rolling pin, we'll just go over it a few times to make it a nice and even thickness for us to be able to roll the porchetta. So as with everything, we start by seasoning with salt and pepper. Kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper. We're gonna put in that beautiful green broccoli rabe pesto that we made just a minute ago. We're gonna do a nice even layer throughout and get all the flavor. And another key component of this dish is the ancho chili powder. So the smokiness of an ancho pepper is going to complement the smokiness of the bacon very well. It's an excellent accent to the pork uh, and adds just a touch of spice to the dish. One more thing is just a touch of fresh oregano that adds a nice fresh flavor to the, to the overall dish. Now that we've seasoned up our pork, it's time to roll it. So we're, we're essentially just rolling a roulade. We're going to roll it into a spiral so you get that beautiful green color and flavor all throughout the dish. So we just roll that up like that. And then the next step is to wrap it in bacon. So the purpose for wrapping it in bacon is as a substitute for the pork skin that's traditionally on a porchetta. The bacon will base the tenderloin as it's being cooked and provide that crispy element at the finish. And then we'll use the plastic wrap to help us roll it nice and tight. We'll tie the ends just like that. And then we seal it in a vacuum seal bag to prepare for the next step, which is sous vide cooking. All right, so here is the pork tenderloin that we just finished a little while ago. We put it in a vacuum seal bag. We cooked it in a sous vide at a temperature of 135 for about two hours. And now we're ready to finish it for the final steps of cooking. We'll put the seam side down on the bacon in the pan.
Now the bacon is nicely browned all around and crispy. I think it's time to come out of the pan. All right, now that we've had a chance to let our pork rest, we're gonna slice it open and, and put it on a plate. Uh, beautiful spiral, beautifully cooked pork tenderloin. So now we'll cut it approximately an inch wide, four slices for this plate up. So we've got a little bit more of that broccoli rabe pesto that we made earlier. We'll put that down on the bottom of the plate. Place the pork tenderloin. So we have here a few of our crispy potatoes. These are the mini marble potatoes that we've slow roasted so they're nice and creamy and then shallow fried on the pickup so they're nice and crispy for another texture. Now we've made a red wine demi-gloss. The wine that I've chosen to use here is a red Zinfandel. So the Zinfandel will complement the slight spiciness that goes with the ancho chili pepper and tie it all together. Now just as a last finishing touch, we're gonna put a few microgreens on the plate. This is called Hearts of Fire microgreens and just adds an extra little touch of garnish on there. And there you have it.